So, good morning, everyone. Uh, yes, I will be talking about um, a uh, very interesting phenomenon called understanding. And then uh, I will segue right into uh, a topic uh, of uh, some relation, but uh, somewhat um, disjoint, and that is um, tasks and uh, why I think AI, and especially AGI, needs a task theory. So uh, let's get started. Um, this uh, paper that, we, uh, that I wrote with my uh, colleagues is called About Understanding. And uh, let's get right to it. Why understanding? Uh, and then understanding, understanding, and, and any theory of pragmatic understanding, this is all in the paper, as well as a theory of pragmatic meaning but um, we'll stick to the first three of these four bullets. And um, I uh, refer you to the paper on, uh, on here. So it turns out that um, this concept, this phenomenon of understanding, which we all seem to have a, an intuitive understanding of, pun intended, um, hasn't really been uh, studied that much in a, in a serious way. Although, of course, there is uh, uh, work on it in philosophy and AI. But in AI, interestingly enough, um, primarily the word understanding appears in context with language understanding. And the more we dug into this, the stranger it seemed that everyone was talking about language understanding, but no one seemed to talk about what understanding really is. Um, so, and of course, you know, uh, understanding is not syntactic manipulation, that's for sure. So, um, we started, to, we asked this question, you know, well, why, uh, why isn't anyone looking at understanding? Maybe there's something we're missing here. Maybe it's not that interesting, or maybe it's uh, embedded in a bunch of other concepts. Um, and, uh, but looking at it sort of uh, from a, uh, the man on the street perspective, uh, when we use this term, what we, what we mean, when, when we say, yeah, I understand. Um, <coughs> if, if, if we understand some phenomenon like you know, a bouncing ball. Uh, well, to some extent, you, you mean that you uh, can explain how it works uh, at some level of, of abstraction. Uh, if you're a physicist, you might even be able to uh, completely write out all the equations for it. Uh, you can assess your ability to affect it. Yes, I can know how to make the ball bounce higher or you know, stop it. Um, you can give an outline of for the limits of your own knowledge. So, for instance, I understand that the moon revolves around the sun, but I can also um, predict that I will have very little ability to stop the moon from revolving around uh, the earth. Sorry, the, 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 the sun. Anyway. It does revolve around the sun, but you know, more, more closely it revolves around the earth. Um, so, um, when you understand something, you can also identify misunderstandings. And this is a key principle for improving one's understanding of things. Um, and uh, I, I think this is really a critical thing uh, that uh, AJ really needs to take seriously with that the ability to deepen one's knowledge. Because in AGI, um, we assume that a true AGI system uh, is capable of autonomous knowledge acquisition, autonomously honing and improving that knowledge, and making autonomously decisions about what knowledge is insufficient, for what purpose, and so on. Um, so really, um, I think, Understanding, it turns out, is a, is a main principle for how you improve knowledge acquired in this way. Now, uh, I'm going to use the term model here, and just to clarify a bit what I mean, uh, a model is really anything that allows you to do, you know, manipulations of something in your head. That's as, as simple as that. Uh, it can be an if-then rule, it can be a physics equation with, with all the terms uh, explicitly filled in, etc. Um, any model, it, it could be a bad model, it could be an inappropriate model, um, 
I wouldn't use the model, my understanding of a ball to uh, predict how that camera is going to behave if I press some buttons on it, and so on. So models are, are, are just um, ways for, for um, they are uh, representations of some phenomenon, and they can be inappropriate, they can be uh, insufficient, and so on, for whatever purposes. So I mean that in a very general sense. Um, and then deepening understanding really means improving your models. Um, so a, a key issue here is how, um, what kinds of models really go into understanding. Um, because if you want to um, represent your knowledge in such a way that it can be incrementally improved as, as information trickles in, like uh, with, with humans and, and, and uh, animals, um, they need to be, this, this understanding or these models need to be represented in a way that they can be incrementally improved. Um, and so that means uh, to, to really improve your understanding, you must have some understanding of your understanding. I had to throw that in there. It's, it's just too um, so what kinds of models? Well, uh, correlation is useful, but it's not sufficient because prediction does not imply causation. Um, and, um, you know, the way we do science uh, by experiments, by manipulating some variables, uh, controlling for uh, um, extraneous effects and so on, is all about directional uh, relationships. It's not about correlation. Um, whether smoking causes cancer is really about the cause of the smoke particles in the body. It's not about the fact that, well, it seems to be that uh, the more people that smoke uh, seem to, seems to get cancer. Well, there could be other underlying causes. Um, and black box models uh, cannot be inspected easily, so how are they incrementally improved? What else is there? Well, I think that causation is really the key here. Um, causal models is the kind of models we want. Prediction does not imply causation, um, and uh, black box approaches are difficult. And so you've probably all heard about the social scientists that, that uh, figured that um, because there was a correlation between ice cream sales and muggings in Central Park, uh, they should ban all ice cream sales people there. Um, the only way you can really know, uh, separate for sure between that kind of a theory of, of muggings and, and the real um, phenomenon, which is in fact caused by the sun heating up the atmosphere, making more people go out and uh, go to Central Park, which means you know, there's more business for, for ice cream salespeople, um, is by uh, actually understanding the causal relationships. So I think causal models are necessary for understanding. <clears throat> now, to, get, to cut to the chase, um, I just need to tell you about a, a few concepts here. Um, we say that a phenomenon phi is some process, state of fierce occurrence, etc. It's a convenient way to say, okay, well, we have a very scalable thing called the phenomenon. It could be the bouncing ball, it could be uh, how my phone operates, whatever. Um, and it's made up of a set of elements that have uh, relationships, um, causal, um, uh, including causal, uh, you know, uh, whole part, etc. relationships. Um, and um, then M is a set of models of uh, that phenomenon. Let's say it's a bouncing ball for now. And uh, these models are, are intended for, for any agent in a, in a reasonably complex world uh, for explaining, predicting, uh, pr producing uh, plans or, or you know, for achieving goals with respect to uh, the phenomenon, and for recreating the phenomenon. I'll come back to that one. Um, the closer these models match the phenomenon in question, and there are other issues that I'm not going to go into, which have to do with performance of sort of you know, how do you know what models are relevant, etc. Uh, there's performance issues for sure. Uh, we're we're uh, we're talking a little bit more uh, a little bit here more in terms of, sort of platonic concept of understanding. Uh, I'll get to uh, an implementation, but I won't have too much time to talk about that. Um, and so, um, 
yeah, the closer the models uh, match uh, the phenomenon, the, <coughs> the, uh, the more useful these models are for doing A, B, C, and D, right? So we can think about um, inward, inward facing relations of the, uh, the multiple variables that matter for um, the operation of this phone, or, or you know, a nicer example is the bouncing ball. Um, the, the inward, uh, so the ball, ball is made up of a, of a bunch of uh, features which can be uh, captured in uh, variables and their relations, right? So um, when you have all of those in isolation as a set, those are the inward facing relations that have to do with the phenomenon uh, ball. And uh, the interaction of, of those, any of those, with other phenomena, such as the the floor, or the walls, etc., outward-facing relations. And generally speaking, you, you do need uh, to have some of both to actually be able to say, well, yes, I do understand. Um, so now we can um, paint a picture of understanding. Um, an agent A uh, understands phenomenon phi uh, if its models are of high quality with respect to phi. Um, it's, um, it relies on, it's dependent on the completeness of the set of elements of phi that are actually represented in, this, in, the, in the agent's models or in the models of this, of this phenomenon. So if it misses some features, um, if there are some um, aspects of the phenomenon that are not represented, for instance, um, uh, if it's made out of a rubber and I have never had the experience, or that no one's ever told me, look what happens if I put this on the fire. Uh, I will be lacking some models for, for predicting what, what will happen if you put the ball on the fire. And the accuracy of the relevant elements, um, accuracy including the level of abstraction, uh, the more detailed, uh, generally speaking, uh, assuming you also can abstract, the better the, better the accuracy of, of the models. So that's it. Um, now, true understanding of the phenomenon, and I, I kind of, I wasn't sure if I should go there to use this concept of true understanding. What's, uh, is there such a thing as untrue understanding? But um, I guess what we mean here is really good understanding. Um, really good understanding of phenomenon phi allows correct performance on all of these following things. Prediction, explanation, achieving goals, and um, recreating. And um, now we can go back to that. So Richard Feynman wrote on, on the blackboard, on his blackboard, uh, it was found on his blackboard uh, when he died, this phrase, what I cannot create, I do not understand. Um, he didn't mean that, you know, you, you should be able to go out and recreate the universe and that would prove that you understand the universe. Uh, that's not what he meant. What he meant was, if you have models of the phenomenon that you're interested in, say, the universe, uh, that can recreate a, uh, a large amount of phenomena observed in the universe from a more compact description of the universe, then you could be said to, under, to have some understanding of the universe. So in, in, in some sense, uh, this is really what science is about. It's about understanding. It's about increasing our understanding. You have to be able to do all four of those. It's not a really good theory um, of any phenomenon that can only predict, but cannot really explain, and cannot tell you what to do to achieve some effects. Um, those of you who know uh, economics will understand that, in fact, that's uh, the state of the art in, uh, in economics. So I would say, you know, it's a pre-scientific field, but you know, that's a whole other discussion. Um, so let's just go, th go through this one by one. Uh, and maybe I'm running out of time. Uh, yes, I am. I have to go fast. So um, predict. Minimal requirement for prediction is knowing some correlation. Uh, but cor as everyone who's taken statistics knows, correlation does not, does not mean causation. Um, uh, explanation. Well, uh, to correctly explain something, you have to know some causal relations. Right? The ball hit the wall, and that's that's why it bounced back. Um, you know that the cause uh, uh, is is the uh, change of of inertia, 
um, achieving goals, well, um, you can achieve goals clearly with uh, partial understanding. But uh, these three in combination are really, are really excellent uh, indicators of self-understanding. Um, the final one, uh, recreating, is, is really sort of the, the goal of science, and this is what uh, Feynman meant. But um, we don't, as you know, have very good models of a lot of things. I mean, most of the universe is, is, remains unmodeled scientifically. So mostly uh, model, good, uh, accurate models of phenomena will always, be will always be out of reach, will be incomplete. So, you shouldn't, you know, make that uh, your requirement because that we would conclude that most people in this room don't understand most of the things that they do every day, and that's clearly not uh, how we uh, understand the process of understanding. So we need them all, um, and I'm just going to mention this briefly because I have to go to the next one, next topic. Um, so I, I think AGI systems must be able to deepen their understanding. It, it feels very strange uh, to think of um, intelligence or understanding as frozen, uh, unchanging. It's a very odd kind of sci-fi uh, and an intelligence that never changes its understanding of anything or deepens it. Um, we actually did uh, use this theory of pragmatic understanding uh, to uh, construct a system where we gave uh, it very little knowledge up front and uh, required it to uh, create autonomously, uh, acquire all knowledge needed to conduct the TV style interview by simply observing how people do this interview. Um, and um, yeah, so I mentioned this. And the results were basically that uh, without any information about how to do an interview, it learned how to interleave a series of questions and answers. Um, what, when, and uh, what and when to answer when asked a particular question, formulating an answer, etc. Uh, Multi-modal coordination, uh, taking turns, uh, picking up things as tactic gestures, for instance, this phone, I did this a couple of times already. Uh, we didn't tell it anything about these things, it, it had to infer um, it had to create basically it the way it did it is it followed our, our strategy that I just outlined to create causal models of what it observed and uh, it even um, was able to um, generate from scratch uh, very complex sentences um, grammatically accurate um, and so accurately that we couldn't actually find uh, any errors in it and um, it it only, the, the atomic representation here was there was one model per word, and then it had to make the structure of causal models on top of the atomic element of word or token, and that's how it generated basically models of grammar. I wouldn't call it grammar because, you know, grammar is something else, but uh, certainly models that worked, causal models that worked uh, well enough so that it could construct accurately, uh, correctly. Uh, grammatically accurate sentences. So it's a new kind of learning based on uh, causal models. And I will go to the next one. Thank you.